Well, hello there, my pinball fans. I'm here to show you today the Pin 1 mini board and the Pin 1 board. So Pin 1 board is the one that's uh, kind of controlling everything, and the Pin 1 mini is this larger board that it's plugged into that just adds the pinouts and some extra features to it. Uh, so let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is you might notice that the lights are kind of flashing on and off on there. And that's because the Pin 1 mini board and the Pin 1 board they actually have a routine so that if there's no inputs uh, uh, noticed or any outputs from DOF seen, then it will automatically turn on the lights on your buttons. You can configure that in Config Tool. I'll show you how you can turn them on and off to do that. Uh, but also it'll turn on this attract mode if no button presses are noticed for 20 seconds. So right now it's in attract mode and they're flashing different lights and things like that. So it's kind of cool. You get this extra feature built into the board that you never had before where your lights will be working even when you don't have anything connected into DOF. Um, so now if I start pushing these buttons though, you'll see now it goes into normal button input mode. There's no, still no DOF uh, signals coming in. And so because of that, it's just lighting the lights up normally. And when you push them, they kind of become a little bit brighter to show you that, hey, activity's happening. It's just kind of a cool uh, feature that I added onto here. Uh, the next thing that is also pretty cool is that you can, uh, it's got two uh, high power outputs and life extenders built onto the board, and that allows you to connect two solenoids to the board. So if I connect this solenoid, I'll just connect one for right now, just to show you how it can work. And then some power to the board. So now it's powered up. And without even having, again, DOF configured, even though this board is fully DOF compatible, you can trigger it to, uh, you can set it up to trigger a solenoid whenever you push the button. So another really cool feature that really hasn't been available to us thus far and very easy to set up to. I'll show you that in a minute. So I, I'll just go right into actually doing the configuration. So you really just need to click this connect button to connect up into the board. And now it gives you the option to, once it's connected, uh, go into all these different settings. Uh, I'll start Kind of with the easy ones, we'll start with outputs because that's easy. So if I click on outputs, then it comes up with this dialog. On the top here, this is auto turn on. This just allows you to use your arrow keys to turn on and off different outputs. You can see I, there's really just the two outputs on this board, so just one and two are gonna are gonna do anything. But you can see if you look, the lights are turning on on the outputs whenever I flip those guys on and off. And of course, you can hear the solenoid too going on and off. And you can of course you know set different uh, power settings for those and you can do that on the main board which is the pin one board it's got uh, 31 outputs built into it uh, and then there's also the ability to hook up to two expansion boards which can have an additional 32 outputs that you can hook up to it and of course you can turn them on and off individually you can see that a bunch of them are already on and the reason for that is because you can see these leds are on right here those are the outputs for the uh, for the actual buttons they go from output 16 all the way up to the very last. And you see if I change that intensity, then it changes the LED over there in intensity, okay? So that goes all the way up to output 31 on the bottom there. Okay, so the next thing is the plunger. I'll show you the plunger next, why not? So if I go into the plunger screen, you can see right now it's just showing all the way up. That's because I don't have it plugged in. So I can plug in the plunger, and this allows you to calibrate the plunger. So really, you can see it's got uh, minimum value, maximum value, you might be able to see it on the screen, but all you really need to do to calibrate it is just extend it all the way out once, extend it all the way in once, and then let it sit for a minute. And then once that resting point updates, then you click the send calibration and you're all set. Your plunger is ready to go. You'll know also uh, there's two checkboxes on here. One of them is push button on min and the other one is push button on max. I'll show you what that does in a second. I have both of them checked. That's optional, but you can essentially set the plunger to push a button when it gets to the max or to the min position. So that's the plunger. We did the outputs. Inputs, really standard here. It just allows you to see which button inputs are turning on when you push a button. And again, you can see that one triggering the solenoid. So there's not much to do there. Uh, then the accelerometer. This is a cool... Uh, place to set your accelerometer. I added a lot of nice features in here. There's three things that you can set in here that are important to know. Uh, I guess a few more than that, but one of them is record dead zone. You click this button on the very top, record dead zone. It'll actually start recording 
uh, what, what you'd call just noise, normal noise inside your cabinet. That noise may be generated by solenoids, and that's why I added this button on the bottom here, toggle output on. You can even make things toggle inside your cabinet to see if that solenoid causes the cabinet to jerk around a little bit, and then you can set your dead zone appropriately by using that data. And that way you won't have extraneous uh, effects in your table or toys in your table causing the ball to move around in, inside the table. This number, you can adjust it manually. You can also let it record so you can see as I move it around. You probably can't see that on the screen very well, but there's a small little box that's getting drawn and it shows you how big the dead zone. Right now it's set to 81 and there's a box that's about 81 out there. I would move it closer, but it's it'd probably mess up the camera, so I'm not gonna do that. That's the dead zone. Tilt value is similar thing. The only difference is this is gonna be a little bigger, so when you move this around, you know, how much do you want your tilt to be? Well, you can calibrate it. You, st you, you set that, you push that button, and you start moving your table around to where you want it to get moved to a point where you want to actually set off the tilt, and that'll actually hit a button for you. And I'll show you that in a minute. And when that button gets hit, then you know that you can, you know, essentially set that up in VPX to send a tilt event. So I'll stop that. And then the max value, you can record this. It's probably really not necessary to record it. Just set it to around 1,000. And if you want your accelerometer to be less sensitive in general, this is the best way to do it. You can set that max up to 2,000 or 3,000 even, and it will decrease the sensitivity of the accelerometer greatly. And that means that bigger movements will have less impact on the game. So this number... I think around a thousand is pretty good. I generally want it to be more sensitive because I don't want to be shaking my table a ton like I would have to do on a real pinball machine. I just want to be able to move the pinball machine and it moves the ball appropriately. Uh, not like moving across the screen, but being able to get that movement without having to like totally, you know, lift it off the ground and stuff. Some people want it to work that way and you can make it work that way. You just have to set this max up a bit higher to make that happen. So. That's pretty much it for there. You click save when you're done with that. Uh, the next thing is the settings. This is probably the most complicated area in here. And if I go into this, this is where you can essentially do everything. The plunger and the accelerometer on here, there's the accelerometer section, the plunger section, but you can set those in those sections that I showed you earlier. So there's no really real reason to set them here unless you want to manually override some of the values and save it all at once. These button triggers bot box though is important. And this is how you can set it to automatically trigger output. So you can see I have button one triggers output one. So that's what I did. And that's why when I hit this button, output one triggers because I set it to button one triggers output one. You can do the same thing for up to four different buttons. So I could set this to button two triggers output two. And now button two, if I clicked it would trigger the second output, which is not hooked up to anything. so. There's no point in doing that. I don't even have a second button on here right now, but you get the idea. Pretty easy to, to do and set that up. And then the last thing that you can set up here are the outputs. And each output can be configured separately for this. And this is another nice feature. So here we can set a max output value for any output. So if I don't want my output to exceed a certain uh, value, I can just set it here, okay? And it'll also allow you to turn that on and off from within the screen so you can kind of see, hey, how high do I really want this to go? And then there's also a timed off value. So what that means is after a period of time, I want the output to be set to this other value. It could be zero, it could be 10, it could be 100, it could be whatever you want it to be, anywhere from zero to 255. 255 is all the way on, and then zero of course is, is all the way off. And then on the right here, there's the set value after. So essentially what this means is it's, it's in milliseconds, so if I set this to 100 milliseconds and I set time value to zero, then after 100 milliseconds, this value, this output will be turned off automatically, even if I'm still getting a signal to turn it on. The device will actually say, hey, it's been 100 milliseconds, I'm turning that value off. Until you release the button and push it back in again, it's gonna stay on, all. it's gonna turn off after 100 milliseconds. So you can use that to protect different toys inside your cabinet that you know shouldn't be on more than a couple seconds you can just go ahead and set this to whatever value you want, uh, you know, up to something like, uh, yeah, 25,000 milliseconds, okay? Now that's pretty much how that works. 
And then there's one more thing, and that's the toy category. Uh, really, if you want them to be the lights to turn on like I was showing, then you need to set these to RGB. If you set it to RGB, then they will turn on. They'll be a part of the light show. And that's really the only thing you didn't know. And then the noisy will allow them to be turned off when night mode is enabled. So night mode's kind of already enabled on this board. Uh, it's connected to one of the buttons on there. And if you hit that button, then it'll turn on night mode. So if you set it as noisy, you enable night mode, and then those outputs will just automatically turn off. And that's pretty much it. So uh, everything that you need to know, I just went over. And it's a pretty cool board. One thing maybe I did want to show you is, yeah, so you, another good way to test it, by the way, is you go into the properties for here, and you can see the plunger moving up and down. Okay, so that's like one way that you can use to test it. You can also see like when I push it in, so that button actually turns on. And then when I pull it out, button should turn on. I must have had it just a little bit too far to the max there. <clears throat> but that's a, a way that you can test that everything's working properly too. You should be able to see the Z-axis move up and down when you move the plunger up and down. If you're having issues in here, you can always go back to settings and reset to default. That'll ensure that any calibration you may have done in here will get reset to default. And hopefully you won't have any issues then uh, when you go to test it in this screen. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I know it's a lot to uh, a lot to go over, a lot to take in, but I hope it uh, adds a lot to the community and that a lot of people find value in this new board that I have. All right, thanks everyone. Until next time, I'll see you later.